Uh, a multiverse is the idea that there's not just one universe, but many. Uh, every Big Bang produces a universe. Uh, was there just one Big Bang, or were there many Big Bangs occurring at different places at different times? People think that the idea of a multiverse uh, sounds horribly unscientific, like science fiction, wild thoughts. Uh, but from my point of view, and from I think a lot of the, us working in this area, uh, it's really the other way around. Uh, how many things do we know about in science that we think we can understand that happen only once? Is there only one star? Is there only one planet? Uh, anything that can happen uh, that can be described by the laws of physics uh, happens again and again. Uh, so I think it's far more likely from this point of view that we live in a multiverse than that we live in a single universe. In, in some ways, the idea of a multiverse is very disappointing to scientists uh, because it means that uh, many of the fundamental questions that we would like to understand the answers to maybe are just answered because of randomness. Uh, different things happen, and this is when we happen to observe. And uh, in quantum mechanics, anything that is not forbidden by conservation laws necessarily happens with some probability. So quantum mechanics allows a spontaneous nucleation, you could say, of a closed universe out of nothing, where, where by nothing I mean a state which has not only no matter, but also no space and no time. Almost all versions of inflation have the property that once they start, they never completely stop. We call it eternal inflation. It's really future eternal inflation. Uh, it goes on forever, producing what we call pocket universes. And the difficulty with that is how to define probabilities, uh, because everything that's allowed by the laws of physics uh, will happen an infinite number of times in this multiverse. So it's very hard to know what you're talking about when you say that something is more common than something else. Right. Uh, but there's still some controversy in the uh, uh, cosmo cosmology community about how real these things are, uh, whether we should really take them seriously. Now quantum physics can start with a state of nothingness and tunnel to a small universe which then undergoes inflation. Right. And there are different versions of that and they're still all on the table, I think. Right. But if the universe is described by a physical system which has no maximum entropy, entropy if the entropy can be arbitrarily large. Then the problem that people have always talked about of explaining why the universe started in a state of low entropy, which is the standard picture, uh, really goes away, because it means that any state is a state of low entropy, because it's low <laughs> compared to the maximum, which would be infinite. The, the simple uh, question that I can answer immediately is that about personal God. And that I don't believe. The God who concerns himself with uh, human affairs, uh, I don't think we have uh, much evidence for that. Um, as for more abstract God, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some people suggest the level of abstraction which I think makes, makes the concept pointless. <laughs> um, if we identify God with the laws of nature, uh, I don't see why we need another term for the laws of nature. Right. Okay. So if you listen through there, again, we're talking about the multiverse, that, that our universe is one of these bubble universes that arises in the multiverse, that all of that can happen without a cause through the laws of quantum mechanics, that... Um, that, that making this range of multiverses means that a lot of the properties of the universe you find yourself in, you're going to be there just by random chance, which answers the whole fine-tuning thing. Um, the multiverse just emerges out of the equations that describe uh, what's called inflation, um, and so on and so forth. So are Borg, Guth, and Vilenkin brilliant? Or are Borg, Guth, and Vilenkin nut jobs? Um, Bill needs to make up his mind. <laughs>